Hello everyone, uh, my name is Steve Ollerich. I'm assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada, and also the founding director of the Spacecraft Robotics and Control Lab. I started uh, my career as a graduate student doing a master's degree in electrical engineering focusing on uh, planetary landing, so how to develop guidance and control systems to accurately land a vehicle on the surface of Mars. And then I continued on as a research engineer working for a small company in Sherbrooke called NG Zero Space. So I spent about two years there doing research in spacecraft guidance, navigation and control or I was namely involved in the navigation system of the European Space Agency's Probe 2 satellite, which was successfully launched in 2009. Thereafter, I went back to school to obtain my PhD in aerospace engineering at Carleton University, and then did a postdoc uh, at the MIT Space Systems Lab, where I was working with the SPHERES program inside the International Space Station, so SPHERES. For those of you who are not familiar with that, it's uh, facility that allows researchers to do experimental validation of spacecraft GNC systems using nano satellites that are maneuvering in six degrees of freedom inside the Japanese experiment module. And then came back to Carleton University as a professor and since then I am the head of the spacecraft robotics and control lab. Sure, yeah. Uh, currently, uh, my research lab is focusing specifically on developing innovative spacecraft robotics or GNC technologies to address a problem of proximity operations with uncooperative target. So, we're looking at how can we uh, successfully enable a mission to go after an orbital piece of debris and deorbit safely down to the Earth or on-orbit servicing as well, that type of uh, mission, so complex missions that require a lot of autonomy in space. That's what we're up to in partnership with uh, some companies in Canada, such as MDA Space Missions, that was the uh, provider of Canada M1 and 2 on the station, and NetTech uh, Design Group, which is a company that focuses on computer vision in space. So the lab has close ties with uh, industries so that we address like real technical challenges. Well, I've always liked uh, innovation, I guess, and what I want to do with my lab is kind of bridge the gap between theory and practice. So that really drives me to push myself and my graduate students to come up with real innovative solutions that would work practically, not just some theory uh, that might not be applicable in practice, but we're really focusing on practical, innovative solutions to solve today's problems in space. And one of them is obviously on-orbit servicing and orbital debris removal. So that really pushes me to, uh, to develop cutting-edge uh, technologies, if you will. I think we're on the verge of a paradigm shift in, in terms of that the private sector will probably take over uh, the space exploration. Space tourism as well will be growing drastically. So suborbital flights for tourists will probably be a reality in the next couple of years. Uh, it might be expensive at first, but then as more people get interested into space tourism and that kind of things, uh, hopefully costs will, uh, will go down. Well, yeah, foresee yeah, space tourism uh, increasing as well as the private companies taking over space exploration as SpaceX is doing or Orbital Sciences is doing in the US. In terms of the future, I think Mars is the next big leap for humanity in space. And we really need focus we really need to focus our efforts into developing the required technologies as well as the required programs that will put us on that road, if you will. And one of the building blocks to go to Mars is obviously to go to the moon as a training base 
and I think most space agencies are working towards that and it's, it's good because that's going to require a lot of international collaborations as we've seen in the past for the International Space Station program. So that gets me really excited. I'm not really afraid of technology uh, as long as the researchers make good use of it. Uh, right? We've all seen Terminator movies and that kind of stuff where intelligent, artificial intelligence kind of take over humanity, but I don't think that's going to happen because researchers have uh, good, ethic, uh, good ethics and I don't think that's going to happen, so I'm not afraid of technology. I would say to young people who are just starting a career that they should follow their passions. Because there's a quote from Chuck Yeager, and he once said, Chuck Yeager is the man who broke the sound barrier in his 20s, uh, back in the 1950s or 40s, I don't remember. But anyway, he said that whenever you like the hell of what you're doing, you're usually pretty good at it. And I find this to be really true. When you're passionate about something, you're willing to put the extra effort and work around the clock and deliver what you're expected to do. So, yeah, just follow your passion and ultimately you'll end up in a place where you enjoy uh, working on, on whatever project you're assigned. And because if you just go for big salaries or things like that, you might end up in a company which you don't really like or not liking what you do. And that might be, uh, you know, terrible for your career. So just, again, follow your passions, stick to your dreams, and work towards that.